How's everybody doing today? Good. Doing pretty good. Is football more fun for you right now? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Having a, uh, I don't know. I just feel like I'm just going out there and just having fun, playing with my teammates, not thinking too much, um, and just doing my job. We report out that DeAndre is coming to visit on Sunday. It's the first free agent stop. What would you think about having him as a teammate? Um, you know, that's something that I can't control. Uh, He's an awesome player, a great player. It um, would be fun to play with him. So, uh, you know, if we end up getting him, then we get him. If we don't, then we don't. But um, no offense to him, he's a great player. But um, I'm just glad. I'm li I like playing with who, with who we have here. So. Seems somebody you could learn a lot from, though. Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah, he, he would be a, a great mentor. Um, you know, I've watched D-Hop since I was younger, um, one, of, one of my favorite players. And, um, you know, he just carries himself. The, the right way, um, and then his game on the field just speaks for itself. So, what are some areas you've worked on trying to get better this offseason? Have you seen that progress maybe out here in OTAs and mini camp so far? Um, I would say just playing fast, physical, um, not thinking too much, and just having fun. And, you know, I feel like to myself that all those things are showing, and I um, just keep getting better and better each day. You mentioned liking the guys you're playing with now. What's the confidence level in that wide receiver room that you guys can go out and consistently make plays during the season? Um, it's high because, um, thank you. Um, you know, we just pride ourselves on having fun. That's one thing Coach Rob teaches. This is just to go out and have fun, not think too much. Um, everybody's going to make mistakes. It's better to make mistakes out here than in a game. So, um, you know, just move on to the next play and just keep on going. With that said, were there times last year maybe that you put a little too much pressure on yourself, uh, being a first-round pick, maybe, and fair or not, being the guy that they brought in to replace AJ? Um, I would say, on the AJ part, no, but on the, uh, thinking too much, yes. Um, just because, um, just coming in, I want to show what I can do, and then also I'm a person that prides myself on I do not want to make a mistake. And when I did make uh, mistakes last year, I would just hold on to the mistakes and it would lead to more mistakes. And now I'm just like, move on to the next play. So. What's that relationship like in terms of building with Ryan? Um, I mean, it's fun um, just getting extra work with him, hearing where, where he wants me, and then also just being there, even when he doesn't tell me, and then him coming up to me and just like, that's the, I like that spot where you were at. Just keep doing that and keep getting better and better. And, I'm sure you've learned a lot from Coach Moore. Uh, since your time here, but where do you think he's helped your game the most? Uh, my confidence. Um, just going out, playing fast, moving on to the next play, not worrying about mistakes, and just having fun. Was there a point last season where that, where you felt that, like that was no longer kind of hindering you? I would say closer to the end of the season, where I just finally was just like, you know, if it happens, it happens, and just move on. And um, it's progressed all the way to now. So. Will Levis came into the league with a little bit of a reputation as a fastball pitcher. What have you seen from him in, in terms of his ability to, to throw touch stuff when um, necessary? I feel like Will, he's a great player. Um, he keeps getting better and better each day. Um, I mean, in the NFL, it takes time. You're not, you're not just going to come in and just be the guy. Um, so, you know, with him, just keep getting better and better. And each day, um, just learning from that. They learning from the mistake you made the other day and just moving on from. You see those different variations of throws. Yes. How much more comfortable do you feel in year two, just as a pro, compared to last year? Um, I mean, my confidence is out the roof. Um, I just, I just want to have fun and just play for the Titans. <laughs> you, were, uh, you were in this kind of same shoes, Colton Dow last year. What, what advice you give a young guy like that who deals been with the highs and lows of a rookie season? Um, what have you have seen from him so far? I would say I talked to Colton a lot. Um, He's very smart, intelligent, um, and he just – hes one thing about me um, with him, um, how smart he is, um, Robert asked him a question, and um, he knows his stuff. He knows the plays, and um, that's something that I kind of struggle with coming in, and um, he's already on top of that. So I just encourage him each and every day, just keep getting better and better with his routes. Listen to Rob because, you know, he knows what he's talking about. So, yeah. It seems, it seems like your personality – on the practice field is coming out a lot more than maybe last year. Is that, is that helping you as far as being a leader and Allen, the, the young leader and even just the outright leader of that wide receiver room? I would say that just comes from having fun, um, not going out there thinking, just knowing like you're going to make mistakes and just keep having fun. seems like there's a little bit of a swagger growing with you. I mean, you had multiple balls that you won 50-50 competition-type plays. Are you 
that? Yeah, um, that's just stuff that I've grown up before getting here doing, um, and it just took time for me to relax and get back to myself, and um, you know I'm able to do that now. That so. one over Roger seemed a little easy in the end zone. What'd you say to him? <laughs> um, no, I, I I gave him um, hats off because he you know he had great coverage, um, but. You know, we we compete each and every day. Some days he wins, some days I win, and um, we just keep making each other better. But you said you've done that your whole life, basically, but it took a long time here. Was there a moment when you were like, all right, I can do this at this level too? At what moment was that? Um, that just comes from the confidence. Uh, where we talk, go back and talk about me having confidence on going up and making those balls, not thinking too much during the route, just running the route, having fun, going up and making plays for a team. And so. What's it been like? everything down and then all of a sudden things change. What, what's been the challenge there? Um, I mean, really hasn't been a challenge like it was last year just because me being here the whole off season. So that's helped a lot. Um, just be, being able to go in with Ryan, Malik, and um, Coach Rob and Tim and just get ahead on certain things and just making sure like when it's time to come out here and practice that I know what I'm doing. So yeah. Ryan talked last week about how much you had matured and grown. How much does it? How much does it help you having knowing that you have your quarterback's confidence? Um, it helps a lot, just because um, you know I know he'll throw me the ball. <laughs> um, but also, just you know, making sure that I gain the confidence of all the older guys, um, them being able to, you know, maybe one day go up to Coach Brady and be like, throw him the ball. You know, he's, he, I'm confident that he's going to make the catch, and that's just something that I pride myself on, just having the confidence in everybody and them and me. So. Confidence is something you continue to mention, and you know we know that you've shown progress. Mm -hmm. What exactly is it beyond the confidence that has allowed you to, to show that progress? Oof, that's a good question. Um, I would say just trusting God, um, trusting His process, following the you know the road that He's put me down, um, and just coming to work with my head down every day, just knowing that you know I'll make mistakes, but I'll keep getting better and better. Has it helped you getting more confident having a quarterback like Ryan, like kind of stabilizing you as a 10 plus year veteran mm -hmm. and like having something solid at QB throwing you the ball and guiding you through the process? Yeah, that helps out a lot just because, um, you know, he knows what he's talking about. So I listen, um, you know, I haven't I haven't been in the league as long as he has. So um, just hearing from him and hearing from all the older guys just helped my confidence go out the roof. So you'd keep us uh, updated on any possibilities of adding personnel. There's a report from the NFL Network that DeAndre Hopkins is going to visit on Sunday. Uh, can you? Is that accurate? And uh, you're looking forward to uh, making a pitch to him? Uh, yeah, well, the first thing is we want players that want to be here. You know, I think we want, want people that want to be here, and then we'll work through anything else. And so, you know, we brought in a bunch of different players. Um, DeAndre will be somebody that we'll bring in next week, early next week, at the end of this week. And... Um, you know, go through the same visit that we go through with everybody and then, you know, start the process. What's a visit like that? Like, what can you pull from that visit? I mean, is it a recruiting opportunity or, like, how, how, did, how did, does that benefit you? Um, you know, I mean, I'm past the recruiting. I, I did that at, at, in college. You know, I mean, I think that, again, would really just want people that want to be here. And then if that works out, then you go on to the next step. So this will be pretty much it until we – you know, either sign or, or don't sign the, the next player. You've got a reputation, Mike, for not Th this will be, um, you know, Last guy you again, this, if that's what you're going to ask your question about today, Paul, um, I'm going to give you another opportunity. But I'm going to talk about the players that are here. And when DeAndre's here, I'll visit with him. And then we'll, we'll move on when we um, make any other transactions from there. Can we just talk to Trey Lennon? He's just even different on the podium, right? We see him out there. He looks different, more confident, and that's the word he used. Just how much did it help for him to be here with Tim Kelly, even last year having him as a mentor? Well, I, I think just what it is is just a, you know, it's a maturation process. It's it's everything in his life um, lining up, um, you know, just personally and professionally, uh, physically. Um, being able to get some footing and get healthy, you know, there was you know, he was really making some strides, and then unfortunately, you know, had a couple injuries last year, and uh, when he was able to be out there, was effective and continued to improve. Um, 
but then I just think the off season has really just set them up well for for where we're at now. A guy like uh, Tajay Spears, do you try to throw as much at him as he can handle early on and just kind of see what sticks, or do you? Try to gradually bring him along in the offense. You don't want to overload some of these these players, these younger players, to where there's frustration. I think that there's a real fine line between that. Um, you know, I think that's our job is, is trying to figure out how much is is too much, and then pull back and always explain to them like, you know, there's there's going to be you know, a learning curve with everything that we put in. Um, I ask you to work through that, and, and then we'll try to pull back where we need to pull back. So it would be the same for for Tajay or. You know, Colton or any of the young you know, def defensive backs that are trying to learn a new you know, or a different position. How did you assess the, the work in red zone today? For yeah, I thought it was, you know, good. It was competitive. And again, we're, we're trying to, you know, make sure that we stay up and, and take care of each other. The, the, you know, when you talk about the red zone, it's just everything is a little quicker and happens a little faster. The windows are, are tighter, you know, in coverage. And so, you know, it's a fine line between competing and then making sure that you know in the spring that you know, we defer to to the offensive player so that we're not you know putting in anybody at in any sort of risk and that we're following the rules. Hasn't been uh, Harold out there, but I know he's been building work in. How much can he benefit from this time? What's he? How's, what kind of progress is he making? I think good. You know, it looks looks really good. He's engaged in the meetings, and you know, it's good to go in there and and see Danico and and Arden and and Harold in there in the meetings with with Crow and 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 Coach Lowe. Uh, and then the young players that are in there. So it's a really good mix and a really good blend. What do you think Will is in terms of his touch, and how much does that develop with a young quarterback at a stage like this and throughout his early years? Well, I think that, um, you know, accuracy is critical. You know, the decision-making uh, from the quarterback position, you know, so when you see the, you know, the, the teaching that can go on with the red zone and how quickly – you know, you have to make a decision and then be able to, to be accurate because of those tight windows. Um, you know, I think it's just a complete process. So, you know, to evaluate anybody right now, the, you know, seven or eight practices of off-season work is not, you know, I think it's about development and improvement, and I've seen, you know, that from everybody. Is that touch an automatic part of accuracy in terms of how you fit the ball in with – I mean, I'm sure you're referencing the 50-yard go balls where we're trying to get guys up to 90% speed. So I don't think that's a very good um, – you know, yeah, I sit here and, I, I again, I try to follow each and every one of you and, and what you do. But, you know, there's probably six or seven penalties yesterday and, you know, we're, we're hooting and hollering about the defense. You guys all congratulated the defense yesterday. So um, there was about six or seven defensive pass interference penalties. So when you're referencing – you know, our ability to try to get players to 90%, you know, I don't know if that's an accurate um, description. You know, certainly, accuracy is very, very critical. We have to be able to move the ball down the field. Felt like that was something that Traylon was doing well, and Chig, you know, we saw him yesterday be able to do that. So there, there, is, a, there is a timing element to them, um, you know, making sure that the ball is in a place where those receivers can go up and make a play. Tell some of the you know, Colton Dow was talking about dealing with the highs and lows of the off season. What do you tell young guys about getting too high, getting too low after? A good Always practice? just you know, I mean, really what we're trying to work on with mental performance and that mental recovery of just getting back to center. You know, one second you're up because you make a play and then you get beat. And, and like I told the team after the practice, like this, for Andre Dillard to be working against Arden Key, you know, Arden's you know he could throw seven or eight moves in one practice, and that's. That's good work, and so that's good work for Arden. It's good work for, for Andre. They've been able to take care of each other and stay off the ground, but you know, that's what we've tried to do. We've tried to do that instead of doing seven-on-seven seven, is try to you know, throw the football with, with guys you know, rushing and, and as long as we can take care of each other and, and stay away from the quarterback and do all the things that we need to do. I think that can eventually help us. Hassan Haskins has kind of been a forgotten guy with all of the hype around Spears to this point. Where is he? I, I, I haven't forgotten about his son. Well, as so far as from the media standpoint. Well, that's your fault. That's not my fault. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to take care of today. Good luck. <laughs> These guys are tough. They have an agenda. Uh, Hassan was – and it, and he actually came up again today. Frank and I were talking just before practice. He, he is a player that shows when the pads come on. Like, that's just – what it is. He's not going to wow you with the speed. He's not going to wow you with his flashy moves. But, I mean, he was a 
very good special teams player for us, a, a physical tackler for us. He was a kickoff returner for us. He was a physical runner. Um, so excited for where he's at and how he can help and contribute and do all those things and and find a role for this football team. But he he is not going to be a guy that's going to you know stand out with shorts and, and helmets on. You know he guy you put pads on and when you have to tackle him or when you have to start hitting guys, which is good for football, he does a good job at that. How do you feel you guys have handled just the distribution of reps? You, know, you got a veteran in Tannehill under the mm -hmm. new offense, second year player in Willis. And obviously a rookie in Levis. How, how have you handled distributing those? It's pretty much how you've seen today. You know, Ryan goes out there with the first unit, rotate the second and third. I think the two spot jog throughs have been really good. You know, I think there's a good pace to practice. I don't think there's too many guys standing around. And then we get back into the speed work and then, you know, allow everybody to get some work into jog throughs, both groups, both lines of scrimmages, offensive line making calls. Uh, Linebackers seeing run fits, and, and I, for the most part, guys, you know, taking care of each other, trying to get some of those runs in, and trying to fit some of those runs from a defensive standpoint, but just doing it at a, at a pace that's conducive to learning. Yeah, how do you feel those three have handled it? You know, what's being asked to them with, with the reps and learning the new, new scheme? Well, they're in here working hard, communicating. I think that you know, for the most part, the communication in the huddle, you know, seems to be. Good for where we're at at this point in time. It doesn't seem like we're we're having too many calls repeated or hey, I need another, I need it again, or you know, guys lining up in different spots. But you know, each day we put you know new stuff in, and you know, so I think it's been it's been good. Like how much has uh, Monty Hooker grown as a leader since he's been here? Well, he's continued to develop, and um, you know, has always you know has played well and contributed. And played a you know a bunch of different spots for us down around the line of scrimmage, been back in the back part of the field, and so, you know, would just you know has, when he's been out there, he's he's helped us, and you know, just, just a couple injuries that he's had to work through, but you know, he's always tried to work through them quickly as possible, and I, I love his communication. He could, you know, it's just him and Kevin back there give you a lot of, um, you know, comfort. Is Christian Fulton dealing with another soft tissue injury that's been the issue with him? You've in the asked past? too many questions for today. Tristan Burks was uh, complimenting Colton Dowell being a really sharp guy and knowing. Who you know, did? Traylon Burks. Now Traylon's going to comment on other guys' learning, huh? <laughs> he, was, he said he was ahead of her. He was like, did you, did you think that Colton. Trey set a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> He made a great impact on his on the local pro day. Made a great impact. Um, was very coachable. Uh, when we made corrections throughout the the workout, he took to him. Um, asked him to try to catch some punts. He said he had never done it. You know, he said just try it. You know, I mean, we're not gonna. You know, we just want to see and evaluate everybody here. He tried to do that. He tried to learn from that experience. When we met with him. You know, he was able to, to process the information with Rob and the Zoom, and so we felt just good about, you know, who he was, and he's continued to, to get better and show up and you know, good-sized player, and it is, I think there's a, you know, a lot for him to still learn and improve on. How big of an opportunity does Monty have this year to take a bigger role in the defense, and what kind of things are you looking to see from him going into year three? Well, we all have great opportunities. Each and every day we come to work, we have an opportunity to – to prove um, you know, the, the, the right to be here and uh, to, to provide value to the football team. Uh, Monty's working hard, getting in shape, looks good, running around. I hear him communicate more. I think I go by that in the spring with linebackers is when you can start to hear him more a little bit, communicating, talking things through, uh, fit in the right places. Um, that's what I see from Monty. So, you know, again, inside linebackers, it's – you know, unless you're matched up in coverage, I think the spring is a tough time to see. You know, when we get in there, and you know, for him to be physical and play fast and, and be around the football and, and and hopefully knock it loose and create those types of plays that we we hope just from his skill set, and then be you know the same impactful special teams player. He's taking a lot of pride in being on the punt team. I get to work with him, you know, half the time over there um, on the punt team, and he's taking a lot of pride in that. Seeing him and Giffen there, so you know, he was one of our best hold up guys. I've used him as an example a lot of just building confidence on special teams and then, you know, just stringing good days together, which he's done. Coach, what have you seen from Aziz in the middle of this defense? 
Well, I just like his personality. Just the, you know, the play will will speak for itself. I love his maturity. Is just, it's kind of got things figured out. I like sitting there having breakfast with him and having a cup of coffee and talking and, um, you know, so he's he's been a, a welcome addition. Leadership, you hear him communicating. Um, looks like he's been here for much longer than what he has. Uh, Trey get get a number of the kicks at least so far in the off season. Is is he you know is there is a pecking order yet or is, or what's the the situation? On, on no, that? no pecking order yet. I, I know uh, Trey's been kicking pretty much every time that you guys have been out there. It's just the way it's been. But Caleb's been doing a great job too. So we're um, excited about the competition that both Trey and Caleb are having right now, and they're both doing a really good job. But yeah, there's no pecking order right now. I mean, how, how has he, it seems like when we've been out here, he's been pretty good. Yeah, he's done a really good job for us. Um, you know, he's got a lot of confidence uh, coming in from Texas Tech, and uh, he's striking the ball really well. And uh, I believe he's uh, only missed a couple kicks throughout the offseason. And i um, really proud of him, the way he does his work each and every day. And uh, hopefully he just continues to get better. With Caleb, are there areas you've seen him improve? Year one to year two? Yeah, uh, Caleb, you know, just coming in from Iowa last year, we really liked how he kicked a straight ball. And he's really improved and continued to do that, maybe even better than he did last year. Uh, leg strength, same thing. We really thought, uh, as far as kickoff wise, he was really strong. But uh, this, this offseason has really helped him out, and his kickoffs have been even stronger. That was, uh, I know we talked about Kyle, of course, had a couple of the bobbles, but you guys wanted to give him. You know, more of an opportunity. How's he responded so far? Are you seeing sure-handedness or? or? Yeah, yes, we have. Uh, confidence is back with him. Um, he's been doing a really good job. Same as Mason Kinsey, same as Eric, Kiaris. All those guys have been out there doing a lot of work um, with our coaches and us, and it's it's been great. So yeah, Kyle's got a lot of confidence back there, and uh, you know. Hopefully we see it in the preseason the same way as we're doing right now and uh, looking forward to him um, coming out there and, and showcasing his abilities. With Tajay Spears, he didn't do much in the return game in college. What were some of the traits that you saw that wanted, made you want to put him back there and, and how has he done so far? Yeah, one of the biggest things that I saw on film was his speed, obviously, whether it's offense, um, just going out there and, and doing his thing. But that, that whole speed aspect um, really got us excited. And he's been doing a really good job. Now he's had to learn it a little bit more because he didn't really have that many opportunities in college. So him just going back there, trying to catch the ball with a little bit of forward momentum, uh, he's continuing to learn how to do that a little bit better. But uh, he's anxious to learn. He wants to come out there and be the best that he can be. And, and that's the exciting part about him. With the new fair catch rule, uh, does that change what you look for in a kickoff returner at all? Yeah, and, and again, we're still looking for a little bit more clarity from the NFL about the rule, other than if we fair catch it, we'll get the ball at the 25-yard line um, because there's other different aspects, whether they kick off from the 50, you know, is it still going to be at the 25-yard line? But, yeah, I think uh, scheme-wise, it could be different each and every week, um, whether a team wants to hang the ball up to the goal line and we want to call it you know, call fair catch, great. But I think that's going to change each and every week for us uh, of what we want to do. Maybe we want to take advantage of a kickoff team that stats-wise haven't been really, you know, really good the past couple of weeks. But we can change that up each and every week. Is, uh, is, is Mike uh, Vrabel a pretty tough guy on, on punters? The uh, reason I say, <laughs> like, like Brett's comments sort of jokingly the other day, he wanted every punt out at the at the five-yard line and so forth. And, and he's kind of, you know, been critical a little bit of Ryan Stone as to wonder if he, in general, do you think he's pretty tough on, on punters? I think Coach Vrabel has a high standard for every position, um, whether it's punter, kicker, long snapper, a gunner, a quarterback, a running back, uh, like we all do. We all have high standards. And uh, Ryan now kind of, uh, you know, we, he needs to raise his standards even more too. So, yeah, I, I think uh, Coach Vrabel does it, you know, where he wants the guys to be at their best at each and every time, whether it's a field punt or a plus 50. Um, and when Brett, you know, said that in his uh, retirement, it was, you know, tongue in cheek a little bit. But he, he meant it, though, because Coach Rabel feels like, hey, you know, our best players need to play at their best at any point in time. And, you know, Ryan showcased last year what he could do for us. So um, we consider him a pretty good football player for us, and we expect those standards each and every week. 
mentioned specific things he's worked on this offseason. How do you think those are going? What's what's you still need to get better at? Yeah, uh, it, it's been it's been unbelievable right now. Um, we've seen the improvement. Uh, you know, last week he had one of his better days. Yesterday was was really good as far as his field punts. Uh, we got to get better in a little bit more plus fifty. But we have seen what I talked about last week was we're trying to match the hang time with his distance and. Uh, you know, yesterday was was really well. Um, even though he was upset, he hit one bad ball out of about 13 or 14, um, as far as field punts are concerned. But we've seen that consistency with him of getting the hang time in the direction uh, correlating. When you look for emergency backups for the snapper, the holder, and the kicker. Do you start that process during this time of the year, or do you wait until closer to rosters finalized? That's a great question. No, we, we try to do it as much as we possibly can early on because uh, you never know what's going to happen to uh, Morgan Cox, Ryan Stonehouse, all those guys. But for a long snapper or a short snapper, we're trying to get these guys out before practice, have them after practice. Anybody who has any ability to snap, uh, we want to see how they can do. And then during practice, we'll try to put them in at certain times to see how they react to guys that are really rushing. Craig, how is Stonehouse doing with uh, positioning on the field? Uh, you know, trying to you know keep using the sideline better. Yeah, uh, really well too. Um, we're not asking him all the time to be the directional punter that Brett Kern was, because uh, there's not many guys that have ever done that uh, like Brett Kern. But um, if he can get it in the vicinity of what we're looking for, uh, we're happy about that. So uh, he's been really focusing on that and doing a good job too. Mike often talks about, uh, you know carving out a role for yourself through special teams impact. Last year, you talked about a couple guys that had surprised you with the effort and the way that they presented themselves on special teams. Has there been anybody, any of the undrafted guys, or somebody that's been kind of exceeding your expectations early on? Uh, I mean, I think they're all doing a really good job, uh, whether it's Tajay, whether it's Josh Wiley, whether it's Colton Dow, uh, some of the other guys that we do have as an undrafted. Um, I think they're all willing to learn and get better. Um, but I, I would say, you know, I, I'm impressed by all of them because they're all coming to work and working really hard for us and trying to learn how to play special teams in the National Football League. Got to touch on the current retirement from last week. I mean, anything from his days with you that uh, behind the scenes story that was funny about him or your daily interaction with him that, that stands out? Oh, every day. <laughs> uh, you know, just the, the relationship that you see him having with um, whether it's teammates, whether it's coaches, whether it's with his family. Um, you know, I, I was just, I felt special being a part of uh, his career um, here. But, uh, you know, every day was just such a great day to learn from him and, and find out how he goes about his business. And um, not only as a professional football player, but as a, but as a dad and a, and a husband too. Um, just learned a lot from him, it was awesome. Players talk about how a coach made them a better player. Brett mentioned you, some of the other coaches through his life. How did Brett Kern make you a better coach? Oh, geez. Uh, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, obviously, he's such a great player, and he did a, did a lot of great things for this organization. And he made my job a lot easier. Um, where, not to say you're not coaching a great player, because every day we're trying to coach. Um, whether you're a great player, whether you're an undrafted free agent, we're trying to coach him up. But uh, you knew that he had everything in order, um, whether it was his practice habits, whether it was game habits, whether it was looking at apps for uh, uh, different weather where he'd come up and talk to me, well, I think the wind's going to come out of the southwest at 12 miles an hour, coach, at 1233 and stuff like that. But, you know, you, you learn a lot from him, and he just made my job a lot easier. In this mini camp, what kind of progress are you seeing out of that receiving core room? I mean, they're so young, they're so, they've, uh, not a lot of um, game experience behind some of these guys. Uh, how are they developing, and how much more are you going to need to see once we get to camp? Yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're going to continue to need to see uh, improvement from everybody, right? That, you know, it's fun to come out here and throw the ball as much as we have been, but it's not real football. We don't have pads on. There, there's obviously different rules and things along those lines that we're abiding by. But um, with the wide receivers, you know, it's been a complete uh, change in terms of the, the pass offense. So they've been doing a good job uh, really coming out and, and learning and being clean with their assignments. You know, for the most part, we're, we're coming out of here and, and everyone knows what to do. And they're going, uh, going out there and doing a good job and, and executing at a high level. 
Um, the thing that's been fun to watch has really been the chemistry that's kind of been built uh, between the different quarterbacks and, and the different wide receivers. So, you know, uh, the tight ends and the running backs, we can put them in that same category also. So, uh, you know, they're, they're doing a good job doing everything we're asking them to do. Uh, we've thrown a lot at them. Obviously, yesterday you guys saw some first, second, third down. Uh, we're going to move into the red area today. So, again, they're, they're hearing a bunch of stuff for the first time. They're going to be out there executing a bunch of different concepts for the first time. Um, and, and I'm pleased with, with how they've been approaching it and how, the, how they've been executing it. Along the same lines with the quarterback position, what are things you like about what you're seeing from, I guess, from Ryan, Malik, and Will, and with, I guess, Six days left of work. What do you, what do you need to see here as you close things out? Yeah, for, from all of them, right? Every day coming out here and just showing improvement in, in whatever area uh, they're they're really focusing on. Um, you know, I asked them at the beginning of, of you know whenever we got together the first time in April, I think, I'm really just trying to f to to pick one thing each day to come out and improve on. Um, you know, so for them, that's going to be unique to each each individual. And, and as long as they continue to show that improvement and, and whatever they, they're, they're focusing on throughout that day, uh, that's good, and that's what we need. All three of them have done a really good job of showing command in the huddle. Um, we're asking them to do some different things at the line of scrimmage. Um, and and they're, they're, all three of them have, have been doing a really good job and have been clean in that aspect. How much might this offense feature motion? And, and what, <laughs> what can you gain from that as, as opposed to having people still? Yeah, I think uh, obviously if we if we feel like that's what's best for us and and you know against that opponent, we're going to utilize it. Um, you know, motions can do can do a lot of things for you. They can, um, you know, they can provide you advantage in terms of leverage, in terms of grass, in terms of numbers, um, cause communication or cause the defense to communicate. Uh, but it can also do some things that where if you don't get an expected look, it can kind of throw a wrench in your plan. So, uh, you know, as a coaching staff, we're doing a good job of, of making sure that we're going through and studying, um, you know, how different defenses kind of uh, uh, approach and, and handle different types of motions. And if we feel like it's going to be advantageous for us, we're going to utilize it. How's Racy done in terms of becoming more well-rounded? It seems like that his role in the past has been to either run a deep route and track a deep ball or clear out a safety for somebody else. Mm -hmm. How's he doing as far as adding to his uh, toolkit? Yeah, uh, you know, similar to all those other guys. He, he, he's coming out here and, and made a good catch yesterday on uh, on a shallow on a third down, um, came running across the field, uh, you know, was available, was was right where the quarterback needed him to be. Um, so, yeah, Race has been doing a good job over the past however many days we've been out here. What's, what's, kind, of gotten, uh, what's kind of gone into your um, – I guess decision on who gets work when at, at the quarterback position as far as how the reps have been going with, with Malik and Will. Yeah, um, you know, those those two have been getting uh, equal amount of reps. Um, and, and really, we've been trying to make sure that uh, each guy, Ryan, Malik, and, and Will, that all three of them are getting uh, what they need. So it's not, you know, slanted in, in, in any direction. Uh, trying to be as fair as we can to make sure that, that uh, Everyone's allowed to again continue to learn the offense, continue to improve, uh, you know, and, and allows us to kind of to see where they're at as, as players. When a guy's got a good fastball like Will does, how do you go about kind of working on taking some off in the appropriate situations and working on touch? Um, yeah, I, I think that's part of, of learning how to be a professional quarterback. Um, you know. Uh, yeah, he can sit there and he can rip it. He's got a strong arm, uh, but it's also, you know, to, to use the the baseball reference, having a different pitch in your bag too if you need it. Knowing, and, and it's not just having it, it's knowing when to use it um, and, and the location of the balls and, and, and all that thing. And, and all that, you know, that's a big adjustment for quarterbacks coming, even coming from the SEC, coming and playing in the NFL. It's a totally different game. The rules are totally different. Obviously, it's a different animal in terms of the, the speed of the defense and, um, and speed of the, the, the guys that you're throwing to. So he's been doing a good job, uh, you know, learning, learning the different throws that he needs to use, when and where to use them. Well, you, mentioned, you mentioned the diff biggest difference in, in the offense is coming mostly from that passing game. Looking at the wide receiver court specifically, what are they doing differently now as they're learning than they did a year ago? Yeah, it's just it's just different route concepts. Uh, you know, in in terms of it's, uh, you know, 
Yeah, I would say just the biggest thing is just being able to utilize different route concepts. You know, everyone runs similar routes, okay, uh, in, in terms of the, their ability to, to run an individual route, but we may be pairing them up a little bit differently than, than we have in the past. And um, so, in, in, on, as you guys have heard from, from a lot of people that have come up here and, and, and talked to you, uh, we're calling it different things too. So there's a, a little bit of a process that, that goes through with that. Um, but yeah, like with all the different techniques and, and any different concepts that we may be running, again, they've been spending time in the, in the classroom talking, talking it over with the quarterbacks, talking it over with the wide receiver coach, uh, you know, Coach Moore, and, and making sure that everyone's on the same page when we get out here. With Levis, he's discussed like higher standards, but also this being a, an experimental period for him and he's making mistakes. How, how have you seen him just kind of bounce back from those mistakes and, and learn from them? Yeah, he's, he's done a good job at that. Um, you know, the, now's the time to make the mistakes, right? Uh, you know, and, and, and so far, Will has not been, uh, you know, uh, uh, an offender in terms of, of being a, a guy who makes repeat mistakes. So that's the biggest thing. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all well and good to, to come out here and, and make mistakes as long as we're learning from them. And, and he's done a good job doing that. Um, and, and we have not seen the, re, you know, the repeat mistakes show up. Eric was talking yesterday about how not too much is changing in his role. Just is there a challenge when you're developing a new offense of not wanting to lose what works for a guy who has yeah, been successful? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, like I said, it, in, in I think Coach Rabel hit on it at the end of the year. You know, I, I, we've, we've mentioned it a couple times up here. Like, we've done a lot of good things here uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, was was the production what it needed to be? You know, last year no, but it, it, it's not all broken, right? So being able to utilize the skill sets of the guys that we have and being able to to continue to do the do the things that we've done well here is something that uh, we need to do in order to make sure that we're as successful as we want to be. How do you balance a? Uh, how do you balance Tajay Spears being a rookie and not wanting to overwhelm him with? all the things that he can do and is capable of with a unique skill set. Yeah, I mean, we're going to give him as much as he can handle, j just like we will with everyone. Um, again, that, that's part of this process now is to see what, what can these guys physically and mentally handle. Um, and, and, you know, they've all done a good job of, of being able to kind of answer the bell whenever we put something new on their plate. So uh, we're going to continue to do that. In terms of the, the passing game, what, what are you seeing from Tajay? What, kind of where was he? And, and maybe what kind of strides, if any, has he, has he made? Yeah, uh, you know, the, uh, the athleticism he's able to use to be able to get in and out of breaks has been really good. Um, he's, he's been reliable. Uh, he's been clean in terms of his, his assignments. And, and when the ball's found him, he's made the play on the ball, which is, you know, uh, a big deal. So, um, again, looking to see uh, some improvement from him today as we move down to the red area, and we'll see, you know, wh where his trajectory ends up going. Tajay Spears and, of course, the versatility that he does have. Are there any other guys that do stick out to you as far as their versatility and the skill sets that they may be able to use in other areas of sure. the offense? Sure. Uh, you know, there, I, I think we got guys that are, that are versatile in, in Chig. I think Traylon's got versatility. You know, obviously, you know, Tajay, those are just, you know, Kyle Phillips. Those are just a couple guys off the top of my head that all have different skill sets and, and uh, you know, provide us different tools to, to be able to kind of move around and use in, in order to try and score some points. Tackle like Dillard, who is so athletic. Mm -hmm. Does that change what you can do blocking scheme wise when you have kind of an athlete first, movement first guy? Um, I mean, not really. We're going to ask him to do, to do the same thing that, you know, my big ugly brother did down here, and, and they're, they're totally, uh, totally different animals. Tim, with this being your second time around as an offensive coordinator, mm -hmm. Is it easier, uh, you know, do you take the lessons, uh, you know, that maybe, you know, we all get better when we see things uh, for a second time around. Can you point to anything that maybe you're doing differently or you wanted to do differently for a sure. second chance? Yeah, uh, I would say um, being more confident in terms of my beliefs, in terms of what I believe uh, I want this offense to look like, um, sticking to that. Uh, but in the same in, in the same breath, not being too proud uh, to take input from the different members of the coaching staff. I think we've got a, a great coaching staff. Uh, you know, from Charles London to Justin Alton, uh, You know, with Haas, with Tony, uh, with Rob. All these guys ha have a, have a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of experience in different systems. And so it's been great for me to be able to trust those guys and to be able to take their input. And all of us kind of put this thing together. Uh, 
you know, because obviously it's going to be a, a, a different deal, but it's going to be our deal. It's not mine. It's not it's not any one person's. Um, it's truly a collaboration of, of all those coaches in there, and, and I think that's probably the biggest take uh, or the biggest difference from, from the first go around with it. What impressed you the most about maybe Charles London and maybe the influence he has on the quarterbacks? Yeah, he's very he's very um, he's very he's very smart. He's very uh, intelligent, uh, very even keeled, um, which is probably a little different, uh, you know, different makeup than than what I have. I'm probably you know yell a little bit more than he does, um, but just the way he looks at it, and, and, and he's, he's very intelligent in the way that he's able to relay that information to the quarterback, I think he puts it in a way to where, um, you know, there's a lot of times where, where us as coaches, we make things more complicated than it has to be, and so if we're going to ask him to go out there and play quickly and play efficiently, we've got to be able to present information to them in a way that's going to allow them to process it uh, in an efficient manner, um, and, and he's done a great job with that with those guys. With guys like Derek and Ryan, who've had success, obviously under the way things were done before, uh, as far as learning and adapting to the new system. Yeah, you know, I think that's obviously a better question for them. I don't want to speak for them, um, but from from my viewpoint, um, it's been great. Um, uh, you know, Ryan from from the different meetings that I've had with Ryan throughout the spring, he's come in here and, uh, each and every day, uh, open-minded. Um, you know, providing feedback. Uh, you know, providing uh, uh, different ideas, um, and, and Derek's been the same way. So, uh, you know, obviously, I think that that question's um, better suited for them. But as far as from my vantage point, it's been great. You had made it clear you thought and expected Kevin to be here when when the time came. Uh, seeing him on the field this week, what are you seeing out of him? And uh, you know, how nice is it to have him on the field right now? Uh, I'd say as expected. You know. Um, like I mentioned last week or a couple of weeks ago, no reservations about him not being here, um, just in terms of his ability to be ready to go when he did get here. So it's good to see him back out there. The energy, I think the, the guys feed off him. I think it's really good for that DB group, some younger guys, um, some new pieces. So to get his voice in there is always a benefit for them. Um, so it was good to see him back out here moving around. Speaking of that, that group, and you touched on this too, but kind of after Kevin and Amani, not not a ton of experience there. What, what's kind of the challenge of maybe working some guys up? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of competition really behind those two guys who played a lot of football for us. And I mean, obviously with Hook, we've had some injury things here and there at times, and he's played some different spots for us. His versatility is coming to play for us, especially last year. So I think that third and fourth safety spot is up for grabs right now, you know? So. We're working some different guys there. Molden's getting some getting some work back there as well, trying to utilize his versatility and what value he can bring to us defensively. Um, but it's going to be interesting as this thing plays out through the next couple of weeks and then the training camp where that thing goes. What did Kristen Fulton do to keep, I guess, progressing even though he's not out there? And, and what, what's your communication like with him during this stretch? Yeah, I think with all these guys, when they're, we're not, when they're not out there going, it's what you can do. you got to focus on what you can do, being engaged in meetings, doing everything you can to improve whatever it is um, that you can when you're not on the field, right? So I think he's, he's been in there. He's learning. Um, obviously, with Chris being new, that's a little bit of an adjustment for all those guys. So getting them back around him um, and then just communicate with Sean Murphy Bunting, the younger safeties, the younger corners. I think all that stuff's valuable right now that he's not missing out on, even though he's not out on the field. Coach, of the new additions to the locker room on the defensive <laughs> side, who is sticking out the most to you as far as their leadership and maybe their impact, well, what the impact will be? Yeah, I think all the additions we've signed in free agency have shown up in, in different ways throughout this offseason. Um, Aziz, he's the ultimate pro. Every single day he comes into work, he talks to other guys, he coaches other guys, he asks really good questions um, on what's going on with us schematically. I think you you feel Arden out there, like you feel him, his ability to rush, his ability to affect the quarterback, like it's noticeable and it's been noticeable here throughout these OTAs. So hopefully that continues. And then obviously with Sean, like just the size, the speed, all those elements, he's challenging, he's competing. Um, so all that stuff's been good. I'm, I'm pleased with all those guys. With T, how much does the addition of a guy like that line up inside, outside, pretty much everywhere, along with Autry, like how much does that open up things for, for your defense? Yeah, it gives us a lot of versatility, you know. Um, and I think 
the other great thing about that TD is just the depth. You know, we can plug and play if something happens one week, which unfortunately the past two years has been more than we would like, right? But there's guys that can go in there and fill those roles, and we got depth outside, we got depth inside, even if it's just potentially one person doing it, you know? So um, that versatility is a huge piece. It adds a lot of value. It makes things a little less, I would say, complicated for us when we do have to transition if we get an injury or somebody's out for whatever reason. Coming back from, coming back from his injury, seems like he's getting a little more reps with yeah, the other guys out. Yeah, getting back in swing. It's good to see him back out here. It's been a long journey for him kind of getting back to where he's at now. Um, he's challenging. He's competing. Knocking the rust off early, I felt, first few few days out here. It was good to see him out here yesterday. I thought he had his best day yesterday. So hopefully that continues. Coach, how's Fitzgerald doing? Good. Great. It was his birthday on Monday. So rookie saying happy birthday yesterday. But he's good. He's engaged. He's around. He's in meetings, doing everything he can right now. Anybody taking over the pieing with uh, Ben gone? Uh, not yet. So we'll see. We'll see where that goes. But right now, I think uh, Harold escaped on Monday. Of, uh, with Kevin Byer, right, business as usual. But there's another guy on this team, Jeffrey Simmons. How ca can you speak to how he's grown as a leader on this defense? Yeah, uh, it, it doesn't happen overnight with those guys. Um, I was having this conversation yesterday just about Jeff from year one, dealing with the ACL, starting late to year two, what he kind of was coming into his own and figuring it out to progress into where he's at now. and. He, he's our he's our guy that sets the tone, ultimately. We want to be physical. We want to be relentless. You see that from him every snap. I would put a lot of money on it that there's not a, another D lineman in the league that plays as hard as Jeffrey Simmons playing and play out. And when you get that from a D lineman, it resonates throughout the unit, right? So I think his play, his play style, is exactly what we're looking for in terms of defensive football here. Um, and then I think the vocal aspect, being able to hold guys accountable, he's grown with that. He has, and he's he's not afraid to do that. And I think, obviously, he's he's became a veteran. Like, he was young with Daquan Jones and some of those old, Jarrell Casey, some of those older guys who were good examples for him early on of what it takes, what it looks like to be a leader here. And I think he's, he learned from them, understand kind of how he's progressed and what his role is for us defensively. How is it to have Danico Autry back? And I'm just curious, like, he, he goes about his business in, in, in kind of a quiet way, right? But what is he like inside those meeting rooms? And he brings so much knowledge, I feel like, to the table. Yeah, it's, it's great to have him back. He's the old savvy vet. Um, he's fun to be around. He's a, he's a country dude who's in the – fishing, hunting, all that type of stuff. So a little bit different personality, some of these other guys. Um, but he's relatable to everybody. I think he's got a unique story, unique perspective that resonates with a lot of guys because he went undrafted. And he's fought his butt off to be where he's at um, at this point. And then I think finding the success late in his career also is a testament to who he is and the way he works, whether it's here, whether it's somewhere else. Um, he's been ready to go. And it, Again, he's another guy right now with us that when he comes back in, it's it's easy, right? It's an easy fit, easy to get him back out there, to get him playing with the guys just because he's familiar with what we've done and where we're going. Is all the changes that are going on on offense and maybe the up-tempo, how will that maybe help your defense get ready for the season? Yeah, I think anytime you can – put us in stressful situations is good for us right now. That's what practice is for. We know it's never going to be perfect out here. Um, but all the different challenges that they're presenting to us right now, it's only going to benefit us in the long run. It might not be be what I like to see every day out here right now in the spring. But um, at the same time, I know it's, it's one thing that we're going to see now that might come a little bit easier to us when it pops up come fall. You know, so um, the tempo is always stressful for us. It is. It's. It requires guys being locked in, guys communicating fast. It. It makes us play with more urgency, which I would like to think we play with urgency all the time. But as you guys know, that's not always the case. So I think that that helps us emphasize that. So it's been good for us. Settle in more, maybe at the nickel spot that, like he's done a little bit in in these OTAs. How much can that kind of help him 
uh, whereas last year he was kind of all over the place as a rookie. Yeah, year one to year two, I think his comfort level with possibly being able to handle the in and out is going to be a little bit easier for him just because his knowledge, his experience of playing a little bit both last year. Um, but anytime you're asking a guy to do multiple things, there's always a concern as the coach of what's too much, right? So we got to really hammer down as this thing goes, and we're evaluating throughout. And I spoke to it a few weeks ago. That corner position is going to be as competitive as any spot on our team, right? So as that thing plays out and we kind of see where we can get the best 11 on the field, hopefully we can settle him in somewhere where it's not as week to week, in, out, in, out. This week, to, or uh, this year rather, to get more reps, big role in this defense. Where would you like to see him take his game to the next level in year three? Yeah, I think for him, it, it, he's he's in that year one to year two mold for me, right? Because he he had the injury, worked his way back a little bit, um, but this is a big development off season for him. Um, I think the learning, the understanding continues to progress with him. I think having Aziz in there has helped him here throughout this spring as well, just the experience, the knowledge of the game. Um, but it's it's the consistency. With all these guys, you can look across the board. Year one, year two, year five, doesn't really matter. Like The guys that are able to do it day in and day out and be consistent and not have the laws are the guys that we're going to be able to count on, count on, play in and play out on Sunday, right? So driving home, being the same guy every day, having the same focus, the same urgency. And this doesn't just go for Monty, but for all these guys where we can rely on you on Sunday to be where you're supposed to be, do what you're supposed to do, and be locked in, ready to make a play when it comes your way.